Certain men have slipped into the congregation. He says they ungodly with brazen conduct. Uh, 12 and 13, rocks below the water, waterless clouds, fruitless trees having died twice, waves casting up the foam of shame, stars with no set course. Look at 16. These men are murmurers, complainers, following their own desires, making grandiose boast while they're flattering others for their own benefit. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, he could have choked on that. And unlike those rebellious ones in Jude's day, uh, we don't want to be rebellious. Instead, we want to follow the lead of the faithful slave, be content to do that. Uh, the slave that Michael, our Lord Christ Jesus, is using today. Well, here's a question. Are apostates today as reprehensible as those ones that Jude mentioned in his short letter? Jude did not speak about apostates. Apostates are considered by the Watchtower to be former members to whom current members are not even allowed to say hello. That is not who Jude mentioned. He mentioned people in the congregation, people who eat with you, people who claim to be your shepherds, who are only feeding themselves. That's who Jude mentioned. For certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago, have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ, our only Sovereign and Lord. These people are blemishes at your love feasts, eating with you without the slightest qualm, shepherds who feed only themselves. They are clouds without rain, blown along by the wind, Autumn trees, without fruit and uprooted, twice dead. Sounds more to me like Jude is speaking about people who pervert the grace of God, like those telling you that Jesus is not your mediator, that you are not part of the new covenant. People who claim to be your shepherds, who feed only themselves at your memorial service, telling you that you are not worthy to partake. Of course, I am not twisting the scriptures to say that Jude was speaking about Watchtower members. Not at all. But he is certainly not speaking of people who have been disfellowshipped from the Watchtower organization and shunned. But if the passage is to be applied to the Watchtower organization, as this gentleman is apparently doing, Jude is speaking to you about your very own, not apostates. Are they devious? Or maybe they're sincerely trying to help poor misguided witnesses. No, they're devious. Have you ever noticed that uh, apostates generally do not try to reason from the scriptures? Generalization. How they love to generalize. I have seen former members reason from the scriptures time and time again. That is mainly what Son of Thunder does. I have seen Mike and Kim, Mark and Cora, Dan Mira, several former Watchtower members delve into the scriptures, demonstrating how the Bible is twisted by the Watchtower organization. I am no apostate, but that is largely what this channel is about. Why not? Because they know we know the scriptures. Job also describes the steam engine stationary, railway and marine. The following is a corrected translation of Job 40.15 to chapter 41.34, with comments thereon from the pen of one of Pastor Russell's followers. Behold now, one with great heat, the stationary steam engine, which I have made to be with thee. He will consume the fodder, peat, wood, coal, as do cattle. Behold now, his strength is in his loins, boiler plates, and his power is within the pot spent in a circle boiler shell, of his belly. His tail, smokestack, opposite the feeding end, will set upright like cedar. The couplings of his leaping parts, connecting rods, pitmans, will be clamped together. We know the scriptures. For a number of years, we thought that the Great Tribulation began in 1914 with World War I and that those days were cut short by Jehovah in 1918. We know the scriptures. Then, 
based upon the promises set forth in the divine word the scriptures we must reach the positive and indisputable conclusion that millions now living will never die we know the scriptures previously this journal has explained that in the first century this generation mentioned at matthew 24:34 meant the contemporaneous generation of unbelieving jews we know the scriptures on the other hand christ's faithful anointed brothers the modern day john class have recognized this sign as if it were a flash of lightning and have understood its true meaning. As a class, these anointed ones make up the modern-day generation of contemporaries that will not pass away until all these things occur. We know the scriptures. How then are we to understand Jesus' words about this generation? He evidently meant that the lives of the anointed who were on hand, when the sign began to become evident in 1914, would overlap with the lives of other anointed ones, who would see the start of the great tribulation. We know the scriptures. Previously, we thought that the judging of people as sheep or goats would take place during the entire period of the last days from 1914 onward. We know the scriptures. Note that this slave was to be found doing so when the master arrived. Matthew 24 45-47 Really, who today realizes that the Master has already arrived? And who is busy with the work indicated? We know the scriptures. So it is reasonable to conclude that Jesus' arrival to appoint the faithful slave over all his belongings, mentioned at Matthew 24, 46 and 47, also applies to his future coming during the Great Tribulation. We know the scriptures. Brace yourselves, watchtower members. The slave that claims to understand the scriptures is coming to you with yet another change. In effect, this is yet another confirmation that yet another doctrine you have been fed for several decades was wrong, was a false teaching from a false teacher. That is what it boils down to. Get ready for the November 2016 edition of your journal. In the article entitled, Called Out of Darkness, the narrative of the Babylonian captivity experienced during the time of the prophets Jeremiah and Daniel is discussed. Your organization states on page 22, paragraph 6. Have Christians ever experienced anything comparable to the Babylonian captivity? For many years, this journal suggested that God's modern-day servants entered into Babylonian captivity in 1918 and that they were released from Babylon in 1919. Before I share with you the new light, may I remind you of what your organization said to you recently? Discretion has led to greater caution when it comes to calling a Bible account a prophetic drama unless there is a clear scriptural basis for doing so. Yet, here is the modern and new application to the Jewish Babylonian captivity. In 313 CE, this apostate form of Christianity was granted legal recognition by the pagan Roman Emperor Constantine. From that time on, church and state began working hand in hand. They truly were in Babylonian captivity. The churches are in rapid decline. Even in the United States where religion still enjoys perhaps the greatest popularity, nearly three out of four persons polled said that it is losing influence. Why is there this decline in religion? One of the reasons is that people are disturbed by what is happening in their churches. Yes, millions of persons have been shocked to learn that things they were taught as being vital for salvation are now considered by their church to be wrong. Have you, too, felt discouragement, or even despair, because of what is happening in your church? A businessman in Medellin, Colombia, expressed the effect the changes have had on many. Tell me, he asked, how can I have confidence in anything? How can I believe in the Bible, in God, or have faith? Just ten years ago, we Catholics had the absolute truth. We put our faith in this. Now the Pope and our priests are telling us this is not the way to believe anymore, but we are to believe new things. How do I know the new things will be the truth in five years? We are to believe new light. 
How do I know the new light will be the truth in five years? We know the scriptures. I love it when these men open their mouths, for they help us to show you the truth of what they represent. Instead, they pick at the organization, they uh, twist truth, they use lies, half-truths to try to grab a mind. Well, are they deceitful? Absolutely. Here's an example. I worked in writing correspondence many years ago, and uh, they get letters from everyone that has our address. And sometimes those letters are from ones who have been fed apostate information. And one example I came through in my stack of letters, it was a sincere older lady, it seemed, by the look of the scrawl of her handwriting. It was probably an older uh, woman. And she sent in a photocopy from a page of a 1910 watchtower. And her question is, why did your Mr. Russell say that you only need to read his book, Studies in the Scriptures, instead of the Bible? Well, I read over the photocopy, and it looks like that's exactly what it said. But then I got an original, the 1910 magazine, and compared, and very quickly you could discern the deceit, the trickery that was involved. When photocopying that page, they put a piece of white paper over the bottom part of the page, so that you didn't see the bottom of the first column. And they were very tricky. They placed it exactly on a line where it sounded like when reading down the first column that the sentence completed on the second column. Well, what was in the first part of that column that they had made invisible with the paper? It was a subheading, Scripture Studies, not a substitute for the Bible. And here's what it said in that text that was uh, disappeared with their photocopying. It says, this is not therefore putting scripture studies as a substitute for the Bible, because so far as substituting for the Bible, the studies on the contrary continually refer to the Bible. And if anyone has any doubt as to a reference, or if one's recollection should lapse in any degree, one should refresh his memory, and in fact should see that his every thought is in harmony with the Bible, not merely in accord with scripture studies, but in accord with the Bible. Now, why would someone do that? They doctored the page because of deceit and trickery. There was no sincere effort to help that dear old lady who received the copy. Very early in this video series, from as early as video number seven, I pointed out that apostates are more credible than the Watchtower. Here is another example. When I watch videos from former Watchtower members, they present the evidence to support their claims. This gentleman failed to produce the evidence. We are just supposed to take his word for it, right? Well, this is the information age, the age that is wreaking havoc on this organization. Here is the photocopy of the page. So many holes in what he said. Where do I begin? 1. He said the sentence in question was in the first column and that it covered the subheading, Scripture studies not a substitute for the Bible, and he read from the first sentences thereafter. Well, as you can see, that appeared in the second column, not the first. 2. He suggested that the sentence or statement in question came immediately before the covered up subject heading. Pause the video and read the paragraph immediately before, and you will observe that it said absolutely nothing that could be misconstrued as Russell implying that the studies in the scriptures are to be read instead of the Bible. This brings me to the third point. Three. I suspect that the statement in question is this statement. Furthermore, not only do we find that people cannot see the divine plan in studying the Bible by itself, but we see, also, that if anyone lays the scripture studies aside, even after he has used them, after he has become familiar with them, after he has read them for ten years, if he lays them aside and ignores them and goes to the Bible alone, though he has understood his Bible for ten years, our experience shows that within two years he goes into darkness. On the other hand, if he had merely read the scripture studies with their references, and had not read a page of the Bible, as such, 
he would be in the light at the end of the two years, because he would have the light of the scriptures. Note what the gentleman said. And her question is, why did your Mr. Russell say that you only need to read his book, Studies in the Scriptures, instead of the Bible? In my years of watching videos by former members, I have never heard anyone implying that Russell ever suggested that people should read the scripture studies instead of the Bible. The lady would have been silly to read that statement and conclude that Russell was suggesting his books should be read instead of the scriptures. And this gentleman would also be silly to read such a conclusion into that statement. 4. The message in that paragraph is clear enough, and covering up the section he claimed to have been covered up takes away from the message in no way, shape, or form. When photocopying that page, they put a piece of white paper over the bottom part of the page so that you didn't see the bottom of the first column. Five. And they were very tricky. They placed it exactly on a line where it sounded like when reading down the first column that the sentence completed on the second column. The sentence is completed in one paragraph. There can be no possibility of making it appear it was completed in the second column. They're devious. This is all part of a grand mind control scheme. And they uh, twist truth, they use lies, half-truths to try to grab a mind. The organization is losing members as more and more of the truth about their truth is being exposed. A typical Watchtower member who has been sucked into this propaganda will put up a mental block to all so-called apostates and anyone who questions the Watchtower. They would even twist the book of Jude to fit that agenda. Well, here's a question. Are apostates today as reprehensible as those ones that Jude mentioned in his short letter? So, the Watchtower member will say, of all who attempt to show them from their own literature what the organization is about, they are deceptive, they are devious. For all I know, the evidence they are showing me could be doctored to deceive me. I do not want to see it. I do not trust those apostates. I trust the faithful slave. And unlike those rebellious ones in Jude's day, uh, we don't want to be rebellious. Instead, we want to follow the lead of the faithful slave, be content to do that. Uh, the slave that Michael, our Lord Christ Jesus, is using today. And still, they want to further implant on the mind of Watchtower members that they are the only ones who can explain the scriptures that they are the only channel that God is using, usurping the role of the Holy Spirit. Also, it is being implanted on their minds again that it is wrong to question the slave. So when the doctrinal change comes, Watchtower members will not question the organization being the truth as they have revealed Catholics do when their doctrines change. So, they do it before the November study edition of the Watchtower magazine, reinforcing their claim of being the only ones who can show their members the way to the truth. Some may feel that they can interpret the Bible on their own. However, Jesus has appointed the faithful slave to be the only channel for dispensing spiritual food. Since 1919, the glorified Jesus Christ has been using that slave to help his followers understand God's own book and heed its directives. By obeying the instructions found in the Bible, we promote cleanness, peace, and unity in the congregation. Each one of us does well to ask himself, Am I loyal to the channel that Jesus is using today? We know the scriptures. And the following is characteristic of the knowledge of the scriptures you have been spreading for over 100 years as the Lord's special and only channel. Bible prophecy shows that the Lord was due to appear for the second time in the year 1874. Fulfilled prophecy shows beyond a doubt that he did appear in 1874. 
fulfilled prophecy is otherwise designated the physical facts, and these facts are indisputable. All true watchers are familiar with these facts, as set forth in the scriptures, and explained in the interpretation by the Lord's special servant. That was 1992. Fast forward some 70 years later to 1992, and the faulty interpretation of scriptures continue, as Watchtower members will soon learn once again, if only they would pay attention. Yet, as God's ancient people were taken into Babylonian captivity for a time, in 1918, Jehovah's servants came into a measure of bondage to Babylon the Great. Here is another example of a display of their supposed exclusive understanding of the scriptures, something of which they boast so frequently. They cited Revelation 17 verses 1, 2, and 5 in support of a now-confessed error. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Twenty-four years later, in 2016, can those verses still be used in support of the 1918 Babylonian captivity? For a number of years, we explained that this captivity began in 1918 and involved a brief period of time when God's people came under the control of Babylon the Great. For example, the Watchtower of March 15, 1992 stated, Yet, as God's ancient people were taken into Babylonian captivity for a time, in 1918, Jehovah's servants came into a measure of bondage to Babylon the Great. However, further research has shown that this captivity began much earlier than 1918. The clever language used and the reinforcement of the faithful and discreet slave dogma will blind Watchtower members to the reality that they were being fed a false doctrine for many years. Watch the language. For a number of years. How many years? Using the Watchtower Library software, I traced the teaching as far back as 1962 without deep research. For all I knew, it could have been taught before then. But starting from there, that gives us 54 years. That's more than half a century. That gives us a number of decades not just a number of years. But will they admit to teaching a false doctrine for over 50 years? No, they explained, not even taught, explained. For a number of years, we explained that this captivity began in 1918. After all, people do not talk about false explainers or false explanations, do they? Jesus himself spoke about false teachers so they choose their words wisely. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.